Hey pen pals, by popular demand, we are back with another episode of Which Pen Would I Pick? The only game show where the contestant, judge, and host are all the same person. Me. Here are the rules. I asked my coworkers at Goldspot Pens to secretly pick out three sets of pens. I will evaluate each matchup, tell you what I like, what I don't like about each pen, and decide on which pen would I pick. Here is our first matchup. All right. Okay. All righty, so we have, on one hand here, we have the Twisby Eco in the Smoke Rose Gold, and then we have a Narwhal. This is a school kill in the Rockfish Red. I nailed that one there. <laughs> the school kill is not an easy pen to pronounce. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we have here probably two of the most popular and affordable piston filling mechanism fountain pens. Uh, and uh, you have the Twisby here, uh, which is very well known, well respected brand in the realm of fountain pens. Uh, the Eco is probably up there in terms of the top five or top 10 starter fountain pens, uh, mostly due to its price and also its construction and uh, reliability is pretty up there as well. Uh, this is a more premium model in the Smoke Rose Gold too, because you have this rose gold finishing that's on here. So it's a little bit more fancy, a little bit more elegant uh, than your other standard Ecos, which may have uh, colorful finishes here. Usually they have a barrel uh, piston knob and the cap are usually matching uh, and they are available in a wide array of different colors but this one has more of an executive fancy uh, sort of look here uh, and then on the other hand here you have the narwhal school kill which is an acrylic pen that has an ink window here and also has a piston fill uh, mechanism as well. So you would not see the piston mechanism moving up and down because of course the uh, barrel itself is opaque, um, but uh, you would be able to spy your ink level there thanks to the ink window, which is actually not hidden by screwing the cap on. So you could still see the amount of ink you have left even though you're not using the pen at the moment. The key differentials here is that the style of a narwhal is quite a bit more artistic and stylistic than with the Eco. Uh, the Eco is, is very much like almost kind of like a German sort of feel to it because it, it is very utilitarian in its practice. It really doesn't have a lot of ornamentation, a lot of design aesthetic values other than just its very clear and simple sort of look, uh, which a lot of people for some reason uh, mistake for vape pens. Uh, I mean, I guess so. Kids don't vape. Um, so, uh, but the, uh, but overall though, it's a very simplistic uh, sort of design. We have on the Eco, we have a number four size Yovo stainless steel nib, rose gold. Feed can be removed and, and the nib can be removed by pulling them out here. Uh, we have on the Narwhal is a number six size stainless steel nib, which is an in-house nib produced by Narwhal. This nib unit can be unscrewed from the grip section, so you could replace this. Um, but I wouldn't, if you want to replace it with another like Yovo stainless steel nib, uh, you would have to pull them uh, both out in order to put in a number six stainless steel nib uh, by Yovo. Um, but overall, both pens are good quality builds. And, you know, I, I definitely would recommend them at their respective price point because they are good quality in terms of uh, durability and uh, craftsmanship are on par with each other. The, uh, you know, the, let's say the just overall the size and feel of a school kill is a little bit on the bigger side when you have the cap posted. So you might want to do the cap unposted on this guy here. It's a little bit, also a little bit more substantial, I feel, in weight and in size than the Eco. The Eco has a more compact feel, I think, because like when you post the cap on the back here, which posts pretty securely, it, it seems to have a little bit less of a, of a length and I can compare both of those here. So you could take a look, you know, for yourself here. The school kill does come in a bit longer. Um, so it depends on your own personal taste as far as like if you prefer to write with the cap unposted, you should probably be leaning more towards the, the school kill in that effect. But it is pretty cool though with the Eco is one of the main draws of this pen. 
get it draw because we're drawing ink in a, in a pen, is that you would see the ink completely sloshing around in this clear barrel. But then again, for people that, you know, kind of get a little uh, crazy about seeing like spots of ink in their barrel after it's been flushed out, you know, having a clear demonstrator bar barrel may not be for you because uh, it would be very difficult to get this brand new looking again because it's it's so very, very clear. Whereas you really wouldn't care as much, I think, with the uh, narwhal because you couldn't see, let's say, like maybe like a speck of ink got behind the piston seal or something like that. Um, both pens are actually fully detachable. Um, both pens include a, a piston wrench of which then you'd be able to disassemble the piston mechanism, remove it from the barrel, and then be able to then clean out the inside of the pen. So you'd be able to fit the piston wrench in here, unscrew this whole entire assembly and pull it out so you could access and clean out the barrel entirely. I wouldn't recommend, I think I've said this a few times already in various gold spot videos, but I wouldn't recommend doing that very often. Just only, let's say you have a really like stainy sort of ink or shimmery ink that just won't come out by normal means of just flushing the pen. So then that's when I would take it apart because you would have to then silicone grease the piston rod here or the piston head and you would have to reinsert everything and put it all back together. And this taking apart and putting together tends to, you know, start to wear on, especially we're talking, this is all plastic here. So it may end up causing issues later on when, uh, you know, something ends up failing because of the, I mean, taking apart the pen over and over again. In terms of overall aesthetics, I, I kind of would give the Narwhal uh, an advantage here because it does have a bit more of this really cool acrylic, colorful swirls, a little bit of chatoyance in this finish, uh, and also the cool uh, ink window is, is very nice uh, that's over here too. And the nib has got like a nice decoration on the, the nib face that's here. Uh, the Twisby has a certain aesthetic that I think is attractive as well because it's very simple, uh, very, you know, say, like, like I said before, very German-esque where it's like just simple, utilitarian, clear to see uh, through the whole entire apparatus of the pen seat and the feed and everything. This does have like a nicer, more executive feel than the playfulness and the colorfulness of the narwhal and so it's a really really difficult decision between the both of them but you know if i'd had to let's say pick one uh you know i'm kind of leaning more towards the the twisby and i know that uh that certain people are gonna be upset with me by hearing that because I, I i do like i think i like the posted size and uh and i also like the uh, the very clean uh cut sort of look of the of the barrel and the the rose gold is really really nice as well so um i kind of I would probably say the Twisby wins this round. Here's our second matchup. Whoa, okay. Battle of the Demonstrators. Very cool. So on one hand, we have the Platinum 3776. This is a full demonstrator here. I'm not sure because of the fact that I know they make a few different styles of demonstrator, which particular demonstrator this is called, but it is a full clear demonstrator. Uh, we have here the Custom 74, which is made by Pilot. And although this is not completely clear in terms of a demonstrator, most parts are clear on this demonstrator. And both pens are Japanese made, very similar type of shape where you have like a classic cigar shape. The Custom 74 is a little bit more cylindrical, um, whereas you get more of the cigar type shape, I think with the 3776. Uh, the nibs here, we have a 14 karat pilot nib. On the other hand here, we have a platinum and this is a 14 karat gold platinum nib. So quite similar in size as well. You have both plastic feeds. You have with the Custom 74, has the Con 70 converter, which is a pump action type converter. It's quite fun to press this and see the little bobbing thing in the, the middle there go up and down. The Platinum, although it does not have it inside the pen here, uh, is a cartridge converter system and it would have the uh, Platinum proprietary converter, which is a twist action converter, or it uses cartridges, which the Custom 74 also uses cartridges as well. The Platinum has a patented slip and seal cap mechanism that you can see clearly through the cap here. It is an inner cup that has a 
tension spring at the very top. So when you close the pen, you put the cap on top and you're screwing it shut, that very last like eighth of a turn, you feel the resistance of that inner cup pushing against the top part of the section here. So you know that the nib is going to remain fresh and it's not going to dry out on you uh, prematurely here. In fact, it's actually rated or it's advertised that the 3776 will stay fresh inked for two years. So it's a pretty bold statement and I have yet to fully test it to that route because every time that I pick up my 3776 I usually don't like you know leave it for that long with ink in it like it usually goes and I use it throughout like let's, let's say course of a few weeks and then clean it out once the ink is completely done out of the converter but it does every time that I use it though it does maintain its freshness of ink. So the Custom 74 does have a a little bit of a similar type of mechanism because you could see it through the cap here too. There's a, there is an inner cap sleeve, but there isn't any tension provided by any sort of spring or anything like that. So when you do close it, it just closes. You know, there's no there's no really kind of like you know tension feel to that closer. Although like I would probably say it still maintains its freshness pretty well. Uh, the Accents of the smoke on the finials are pretty nice, as well as the grip section. It just adds a little bit more visual flair than just having something that's completely clear. And the dangers to having something that's completely clear in this design is that it may look like a big crystal. You know, it's, it may look like it's a completely clear pen that it's like, oh, it's, it's a cheap pen. I mean, these, both of these pens, neither of them could be considered in the realm of cheap whatsoever. Their costs are well above $100. These pens are fairly like adequately priced as a good entry level into the gold nib. Um, and this is an important step for many pen collectors because when you start out in fountain pens, you don't automatically jump to the really, really expensive ones. Usually you start out like Lamy Safari, Pilot Metropolitan, and then you kind of graduate from there and explore different brands and see what the quality difference is with a, a 14 or an 18 karat gold nib. And with both of these Japanese style nibs, you can expect a really nice precise line. Pilot's going to be a bit more on the smoother side and it's gonna be a little bit more like thicker in line quality than a platinum would. So platinum and sailor have very, very tight controlled lines. So if you're going to pick a platinum nib, you have to kind of weigh the ability of, of the, the, the line thickness versus the comfort of having a nib that maybe has a little bit more feedback than you might be used to. Um, so if you like a, a more smoother writing nib, go with the Pilot or go with a platinum that's either in, let's say the medium or broad size, because even when you're looking at medium and broad in a, in a platinum or a sailor, it's still going to be equal to, let's say a medium or a fine in a European style brand. Pilot's gonna be just a little bit on the thicker side than let's say platinum. So if you have a medium, which this is a medium, it's got a little sticker on it that says M. So this is a, a medium point uh, custom 74. This here is a broad nib in the platinum. And I would probably say like their line quality is going to be on par with each other because of the fact that the the broad nib is not going to be that broad um, that you're going to be worrying about as a, as a gusher on the page. If you wanted something like that, they do have something called a double broad or what they call a coarse nib or the music nib. And that will get you a pretty nice uh, thick stroke of ink. Overall, I mean, like, I, I probably would also prefer, I mean, both the pens are, are phenomenal in terms of their size and uh, balance. You know, let's say the, the Custom 74 is just a bit longer, uh, but both since they're mostly constructed out of uh, the resin, uh, that they have a, a lightweight, you know, they feel pretty nice in hand. I would probably like give the grip more of an advantage towards the, the Platinum just feels a little bit more longer and thicker in grip than the, the Custom 74 feels like I'm, I'm really at the edge of the, of the nib and the nib is also a little bit smaller as well. If you're looking at both of those compared to each other, the Platinum's a bit of a bigger nib, but I do like the higher capacity of the Con 70 converter. The Platinum converter's okay. It doesn't really hold like all that much ink, but um, and it's also just a screw converter, whereas this has got that nice like, little pump action feature. For this round, you know, because of my uh, love for my Platinum 3776 Kumpo that I still have, I will pick the Platinum 3776 Demonstrator as the winner of this matchup. And here is our third and final matchup for today's episode. 
Okay, all right. Battle of the retractable pens. So on one hand here, we have the Lamy Dialogue 3. And on the other, we have the Pilot Vanishing Point. So two giants in the retractable fountain pen sub market or sub culture of fountain pens. The convenience of which is clearly seen in the action of not having a cap. So you could just either click or twist and you have yourself a fountain pen that is ready to write. Uh, so first of all, looking strictly at the size, we have the Dialog 3 is a big, big, big pen. It is, it is a big tube that's rounded on both ends and it has a neat little feature that when you have the pen closed, then that's when the, the clip comes out. So you'd be able to activate the clip, you know, make it wide enough to fill in your shirt pocket. And then when you twist it back open, the clip actually recesses. So it actually comes down so that you wouldn't be able to then reclip it to something because of course you wouldn't want to reclip it, the pen's in active mode and could certainly get on something that if you, let's say, attach it to your pocket and then something else is touching with it or it ends up banging against it, you don't want to have that happen. So um, really awesome design quality uh, that Lamy Germany came up with for this design. So the uh, Dialog 3 actually uses a LZ27 converter, uh, same thing that you would find on the studios, or it also could use the LT10 ink cartridges. So it's a pretty easy uh, cartridge converter system to use. And then if you wanted to uh, unscrew the whole section here, you would have the nib. If you're familiar with vanishing points, works the same way to be able to fill the pen or replace the nib is that you would unscrew the barrel and the nib unit comes out full with the converter attached. So I talked about the Dialog 3, let's talk about the Vanishing Point. Vanishing Point is made by Pilot in Japan and has been one of, it's probably the most well-known retractable fountain pen on the market. It's also the one of the most affordable. Platinum had introduced the Curidas last year, but I kind of still feel that it's worth the price to go for a Vanishing Point when it comes to a retractable pen because they really figured this out many, many years ago and have continually made gradual improvements to the design to uh, enhance on the uh, issues of dry out or the, uh, the issues of the mechanism because it is very, very complicated, I suppose, to engineer a pen that doesn't operate using a cap. So uh, with a simple push of the button on the back here, the nib the hooded nib protrudes out of the very end of the pen. You have the clip is built in, does not go in and out like the dialog does. It just kind of stays there. I know for some people, it's kind of like a, oh, I don't really like the fact that the clip is there. It gets in the way of my grip and things like that. And some um, other people like me, I just be like, well, I'm just holding it like this. The clip's not getting in the way. But you know, if you, if you hold your uh, pens any other way, the clip may be a little bit of an issue, but they do make the Vanishing Point in a Decimo or also in that Vanishing Point LS, which um, they kind of mess around with the clip shape and placement. That way it kind of negates the, uh, the presence of the clip. The Vanishing Point fills using cartridge and converter. The converter that's included with it is the Con 40 converter with the, all these little ball bearings that are in here. Don't think your pen is broken. It just includes little ball bearings that act as agitators to press the ink down as it's flowing towards the front end of the pen. I don't really have that many good things to say about the Pilot Con 40 converter. I think a lot of people who have experience with the Con 40 converter will agree. It doesn't really, it's not really the greatest converter. It doesn't hold a lot of ink and it's also kind of difficult to suck up ink and get like a full fill uh, either. So um, the Lamy converter has a nice advantage in that, like you could really get a good fill on this converter. Also too, is that um, it does hide the apparatus that the nib is attached to, hides a decent amount of the converter. You may not even even see the ink come up all the way here because it doesn't fill up that much. So like you may only come up to the line here and you might not even see the ink that's inside your pen and think you didn't fill up the pen. However, the Dialog 3 has cutouts on the side, which then allow you to see the ink that's inside the converter pretty much all the way where the converter attaches. So that's a, that's a nice little de design feature too. The Dialog 3 has a 14 karat LZ50 nib, which you might find familiar if you have a Safari or All-Star. Um, it's the same design, but it's made of 14 karat gold. 
and trust me when I say this, the 14 karat golds get special treatment over at the Lamy factory in Heidelberg. So this is not just a game to try to get more of your money here for a premium writing experience. These 14 karat gold nibs are treated with a special type of VIP white glove service that um, really lend to a nice, smooth, responsive writing experience that gives you a little bit of that bounce, a little bit of that, you know, a, a higher degree of smoothness, certainly, um, but it does write exceptionally well. The Pilot 18 karat gold nib is also a really nice nib, very smooth, and it's one of the most affordable 18 karat gold nibs that you'll find on the market. So, because you're looking at an 18 karat gold retractable fountain pen that retails for just about $200, and then you get of course, your standard street price includes a discount, which brings it down farther than that. Whereas the Dialogue 3, it's a little bit on the pricier side. So definitely a lot of value with the Pilot Vanishing Point. Um, replacement nibs are available in this, so that let's say if you want to buy one of the Vanishing Points and then opt to purchase just the nib unit, you would get the nib unit and the converter, and then just be able to simply install a new nib unit fairly easily and then have yourself, let's say, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, or 1.0 millimeter stub. Um, or you could even, let's say, take the nib to a nibmeister, have it ground in whatever way that you prefer, and then that way you would have like a specialty uh, fountain pen nib that you could then swap out in and out of your vanishing points. The LZ5014 karat gold nibs are also replaceable. You replace them the same way you would with a Lamy Safari, which um, you would just slide it off the rails of the feed here, and then you would pop on the new uh, nib. You could replace it with the stainless steel version that you would find on a Lamy Safari, or you could, let's say, purchase a 14 karat gold spare nib and then switch it, if you please, on here as well. So the other big difference that you can't see here you can see a big size difference, but you can't see the price difference. And the Dialogue 3 weighs in at a hefty price point over $300, whereas the Pilot Vanishing Point is available at under $200. I actually think you could probably buy two Vanishing Points if they were on sale that would meet the value of one Dialogue 3. So the question then becomes, is the Dialogue 3 twice the pen as a Pilot Vanishing Point? And you know, for what it's worth, you know, you have very similar functionality. You have a really quick draw fountain pen system that doesn't require a cap, has a nice, reliable, retractable system, and you have a really nice, smooth writing experience with either the 18 karat gold nib or the 14 karat gold nib here. Uh, so it, it's, it really does come down, I feel, to aesthetics. Um, of which I think the Vanishing Point is really classy looking. It has more of a uh, pleasing, uh, organic sort of look and the and, and very like Art Deco-ish, I would say. Um, whereas the Dialogue 3 has a more German Bauhaus appeal um, where it's very modern looking, very striking, a strong silhouette um, that has just a slight little bit of a rounded end on both ends here and that really cool uh, door that opens up here. Uh, you know, it's it's really, really difficult, but I think I'm going to have to give this one to the Pilot Vanishing Point on, on just the absolute amazing value that this pen gives you. And, you know, the, the fact that it gives it to you at such a low, comparatively low price than the Dialogue 3 here. Although I'm excited to see what happens later on this year when they introduce a new Dialogue to the collection that, that may change your mind about this matchup. Um, but for what we're comparing here, I would give the win to the Pilot Vanishing Point. Which pen would you have picked? Let us know in the comments below. If you'd like for me to weigh in on a particular pair of pens, please feel free to email your matchup suggestions to orders at goldspot.com. Send your emails attention Dina or Asha so that I won't see them. I don't wanna know what it is that I'm gonna be looking at. Hopefully this video helps you make the tough decisions on which pen will be your next. If it did help, I accept tips in the form of likes and subscribes. If you'd like to take a look and find more information about the Twisby Eco, we do a Twisby Eco overview that you could find right over there. And if you're interested in looking at my Platinum 3776 Kumpo, you could check out that video unboxing right over there. And then subscribe to Goldspot Pens for more fine writing videos and other various fun things that we do on the channel. Thank you for watching and stay inky, my friends. Take care.